In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the new Unreal Engine 5 Enhanced Input Action System. You can create your own project or if you don't have one, let's make a new project. Let's first launch Unreal Engine 5. I'm going to go ahead and select games and then select the third person template. And with that, just give it a name. I'm going to call it Enhanced Input and go ahead and create the project. If you're interested in in-depth game development courses, please visit my website pixelhelmet.com, which you can also find in the description below. Before we start, I am going to go ahead in the third person folder. I'm going to delete the input folder because it already exists here, the topic we're going to talk about. So let's delete this input. We're going to make it ourselves, and let's delete it here. And in the blueprints, go into the BP third person character. Let's go ahead and delete everything inside of here. So let's delete everything and let's start creating our own input. So the new movement system in Unreal Engine 5 is the enhanced input action. So let's go ahead in the third person character or third person folder. Let's right click, make a new folder, call it input. And inside of this folder, again, let's right click and let's go ahead and select input down here. And let's create something called an input mapping context. Context. So we have to create this one before we create the input action. I'm going to call it IMC for input mapping context. And I'm going to call it default. I will click on this one. And now inside of here, you see you need some mapping. So if you click on the plus here and click on this small arrow, you can see here you need mappings to add here. And these are the input actions. So right now we don't have one. I'm going to delete this one for now. I'm going to minimize this a bit. And down here, let's right click, select input and select input action. So for this one, I am going to call it IA for input action and call it movement. And we can click on this plus. And now if we click here, we can now select the input action we just made. So for this input action, I want to move uh, forward, backward, right and left. And if you want to see this input action, I can open it up. You can see here inside of this input action, it says consume input. We want that to be ticked. And down here, we need to change the value type. So the value type, right now we need the axis 2D because we need to have movement in the X and Y axis. So we, we are moving uh, forward, backward, uh, right and left. So we need to axis the X and Y axis. So let's select the axis 2D here. And for the triggers and modifiers, don't worry about it for now. Okay, let's save this one. Let's go back to the mapping context. And inside of here, you can click on this keyboard icon. Click on W to move forward. And let's, let's add a couple of them here. I'm going to assign it here. So clicking on this icon, clicking on S on the keyboard, clicking on D on the keyboard, and A. So moving forward, backward. To the right and to the left all right so let's save it here and let's just edit and see what happens before we continue so let's go to blueprints go to the third person character and inside of here let's right click and make a new event let's just make the begin play event which is the simplest event in blueprint so what happens when i begin playing the game and here what i want to do is i want to get the controller for this character so just right click here in this graph and write get controller so we are getting the controller of this character and then we want to cast to the controller it's using so saying cast to player controller so this is just the default controller so now we have the player controller for this character what we want to do now is drag from here and now we use this new system the enhanced input action system so let's drag from here and write enhanced and you get this subsystem that you have to select. And then from here, you can drag from here and say add mapping context. So what we're doing initially here is we are taking this mapping context that we made and we're making it uh, work here. So we're adding it to this character. Next, what we can do is we can search for this input action that we made. So right click here, write IA movement. And you see this event IA movement that we made. And the action value is the value that we changed here, the value type inside of the input action. So this is the value that we have selected. We selected an axis 2D, and this is why it's showing like this. Let's right-click this one and split to struct bin. And now you can see we have an X and a Y, 
because we selected an axis 2D. Now let's add the movement for the player. Let's right click here and say, get control rotation. And now let's also right click and say, get forward vector. So I'm going to get the forward vector and let's right click on this rotation pin and say split. And this one as well split so I can get the X, Y, and Z. Because uh, if you know blueprint, the rotation always consists of an X, Y, and Z rotation, as you can see here. But when I right click and split the struct pin, I can see all of these three pins, the X, the Y, and the Z. Because for the forward movement, we only need to affect the Z, not the X and Y. So I'm going to connect this and let these two be empty. And then I'm going to drag from here and say, add movement input. And select like this one here and connect this one to triggered. Okay, let's do the same thing here for the uh, right and left movement. So I'm going to copy this, get control rotation. And now I'm going to say, get right vector like this, right click here, split struct pin. And now I'm, I only want to affect the X and the Z, not the Y. Okay, drag from here and say, add movement input. And let's connect it now. Okay, so for the X and Y, we need to connect them to the scale value. Let's take this X, connect it here, and let's take the Y and connect it over here instead. You can double click on these lines to make it look a lot better. So organize uh, your code so it doesn't look messy, just like this. I'm going to select the new editor window so I can have the window up here. Now let's move around and right now it's not moving because uh, I forgot to select this one. So in the mapping context, select your mapping context. Let's play again. And when I move around now, you can see even though I'm pressing forward, left, right and back, it's just running forward. So we need to do something in our mapping context. For all of them, just click this small arrow so we can see the options down here. And for the W, we don't really need to do anything. It's working fine. For the S, we need to add a modifier. So we need to uh, invert the movement. We need to go backwards. So clicking on this uh, plus for the modifier and selecting negate, which inverts the input axis, as you can see here. So click on this one and you can try to click on play again. And now you can see I can move back correctly. So we need to adjust the D and A movement because they are also running forward. We need to click on the plus again for the modifier and add to world space. And we need to do this as well for the A to world space. However, again, for the A, we need to invert the movement. So I'm going again to add the negate modifier. Okay, so now if I click on play, you can see I can move forward to the right, back and to the left. So right now the movement is correct, but now we need the mouse to be working as well. Let us right click down here again, go to input, input action and call this one IA look. I will click this input action and let's change the value type to an axis 2D again because we want to look with the mouse at the X and Y axis. Over here in the mapping context, let's go ahead and click on the plus. And for this one, we're going to add our IA look that we just made. And here, let's search for mouse. And you can select this one called mouse X, Y, 2D axis. And before we add any modifiers, let's see if it works. So let's go back to the third person character. Inside of here, let's search for it, IA look, and let's select the event. And here, we're just going to say, add controller uh, yaw and add controller pitch. So we need the add controller yaw and add controller pitch. So let's connect those and let's, co let's right click here, split struct pin. Let's add the X to the, uh, to the yaw input and let's add the Y to the pitch input. And let's click on play and see what happens. So if I look down, see it looks up, works correctly. But uh, as you can see, when I move the mouse up, it's actually going the, the opposite way of what I like. So I'm going to go back here, go to the mapping context. And again, for the modifier, click here and add negate. So uh, the movement to the right and left was correct. So I don't want to invert that. I only want to invert the up and down movement for the mouse. So clicking on this arrow for the negate, you can see I can select what I want to invert. And the only thing I want to invert is the Y axis. So looking up and down. So I'm going to remove this from the X and Y. And let's click on play. And as you can see, 
everything is working correct. I can look up and down correctly and right and left. Okay, so the last thing we need is the jump. Let's go back, right click, input, input action, call it jump. And for this one, we don't need to edit anything. Let's go to the mapping context, click on the plus and select your jump. And for the triggers, we only want to press this one. So let's add a key. Let, let me click here and press my space bar. And for the triggers, I want to click on the plus here and select rest because I don't want to run the code 24 seven. I just want it to run one time when I jump and then it can run again when I'm landing on the ground. Let's go back to the uh, blueprints, the third person character again. And inside of here, let's right click, search for IA jump, select the event. And here we're just going to drag from here and say jump. And that was it. So we can now click on play. I can walk around correctly. If I press on the space bar, it jumps correctly and I can jump again when I land on the ground.